Welcome to the Afterspin, opinions from thought leaders in our state. I want to ask John Hood and Chris Fitzsimon. The News and Observer recently wrote a piece about the large number of banks that are closing branches in rural parts of our state. They claim many customers are banking online and these branches are just no longer profitable. This is yet another sign of the decline of our rural areas. Comment on this story and what impact it's going to have and perhaps what we can do to help it. Chris, I'll start with you. I'm not sure what we can do to help it. It's part of an inevitable shift, but I, I think the concern is one of the reasons I think we had so many problems, there was a lot of reasons for the financial collapse, but one of the reasons was the, the way mortgages are not tied to the local banks and people don't know who their bankers are. And uh, a lot of people have said that, uh, you know, if uh, in the old days, if you had a mortgage at somebody you walked in and talked to and you had a problem, he or she would call you up and you'd work it out before you had a big problem. Uh, I'm really concerned that uh, it's very convenient to bank online, but I think a, a brick and mortar presence in communities really is important. Now, you can't force banks to do it. That's the question, just like all the other economic development. But I do worry about the long-term impact on these areas. Going back to the old days of Wachovia's personal bank. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. John, what's your take on this? Well, Chris says you can't force banks to do it. I, I'm not sure every member of the Congress would agree with that statement. Some of them are probably thinking about this problem and how can we solve it by forcing banks to have branches. This is the kind of thing that the Congress has done to banks for decades. There are fewer branches for many banks in urban areas. This is not a rural phenomenon. This True. is a national phenomenon True. because people bank online. If you go to your bank, I like to go into a bank and now I don't usually wait in line, and often the tellers seem desperately glad to see me, which is kind of surprising, because the, they just don't have a lot of customers in an urban area. So this is, an, I think, just part of the technology changing this customer service uh, industry. There's nothing the government can or should do about it. But the, da the danger, maybe not. But I don't, it speaks I don't to the decline well, in rural North well, Carolina. Well, it also speaks, I'm, I think there's got to be some presence for banks, and I don't know how we figure out a way to do it that's not onerous to the banks, but I, I do think, for, for example, there, if you apply for every, every moment, mortgage every loan online and, that, and it's shipped to somewhere in San Francisco and let's hope Wells Fargo isn't making up a fake account, uh, but, uh, <laughs> but it's shipped somewhere else and you, you don't have any personal relationship, you can't explain your circumstances, you don't get to know the person, uh, I think we really do lose a lot. Maybe it's inevitable, maybe it's technology, but I think it's a, I think it's a sad yeah, state If of that is the case, then banks are leaving money on the table. They are, they are failing to maximize their profits by finding customers who will be good credit risk and lending the money and getting good interest. Therefore, someone will say, you know, if we went back into these areas with some branches for people who are not online, we would make good money. That's how capitalism works. Well, and, and, and all of these community banks now have an opportunity. They've got buildings already built they can they move into. Well, thank you for watching the After Spin. We'll have more video all during the week on ncspin.com.